The hedge fund industry is a highly leveraged industry with hedge fund managers across the world using a extensively high amounts of leverage in order to trade in different assets like equities, fixed income, currencies, commodities across different markets and therefore they use leverage to deploy money in the markets and earn severe, severely high profits from that. Hello everybody and welcome to the 8th video on the hedge fund series. Uh, requested extensively this video ha this video has been requested by many of the participants on my uh, youtube channel many of the subscribers of my youtube channel especially focusing on cfds or contracts for differences if you're working in the hedge fund industry you would understand that cfds are contracts for differences and what do they mean what do they uh, imply why do hedge fund managers initiate these positions this video is aiming at giving you the background and an overview of the CFD. If you're interested in a career in global markets with a focus on equities, foreign exchange and fixed income products, especially in operations, regulations and settlements across four sectors, fund accounting, OTC derivatives, trade life cycle and custody operations, I request you to please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and colleagues because as a trainer of 14 years with this segment, I bring to you both not just theoretical knowledge but a lot of practical examples with respect to understanding the fund accounting, trade life cycle, OTC derivatives, what are the processes, what are the regulations, what are the operations involved etc in these segments. So let's first take a look at what is a CFD. A CFD is an OTC derivative. The minute you hear the term OTC, understand that it is over the counter. Over the counter implies that it is a structured product entered into between two parties. One party to the trade is the hedge fund. The counterparty to the trade is called as a CFD provider. In most cases, the CFD provider is a prime broker. If you want to know more about prime brokerage services for the hedge fund industry, please do take a look at the video that I've already prepared on prime broking and prime broker services, which I will share the link below. So this is a product that is a bilateral contract between the hedge fund and the CFD provider to buy or sell an underlying asset. Since it's a OTC derivative, it is structured, it is designed to meet the requirements of the hedge fund. The hedge fund can initiate either a long CFD position or a short CFD position. When we say long CFD position, it means it gives the hedge fund the ability to buy the underlying asset. If we, it's a short CFD position, it means it gives the hedge fund the ability to sell the underlying asset. In reality, there is no physical settlement of a CFD contract. It is only cash settled. The third aspect of CFD is it is extensively uses margin. That means there is a lot of leverage used by the hedge fund. If the hedge fund is using leverage, that means somebody is providing the leverage. Who is providing the leverage? The CFD provider is providing the leverage to the hedge fund. This is called as trading on margin, implying that with a limited capital outlay, the hedge fund is able to take large positions in the markets. The fourth aspect of the CFD is it's usually used only by institutional investors. In the US markets, in fact, it's extensively used only by institutional investors in other markets of London as well as uh, Australia and Singapore. Even retail investors participate but the participation of institutional investors like hedge funds and mutual funds is extremely high. The CFD comes with no expiry date. So if the hedge fund actually outright buys stocks, they have to settle it by T plus 2 settlement or whatever is the settlement period with uh, the stock exchange but in the case of CFD there is no expiry date and the hedge fund can close out the CFD whenever they want to. The CFDs are only cash settled there is no physical exchange of cash for goods or cash for assets the profits or losses are calculated on the expiry uh, or on the maturity of the contract or on the closing out of the contract as they rightly use the word closing out. They don't use the word expiry or maturity. They use the word closing out date. 
The profits are calculated on the closing out date. If the hedge fund earns a profit, then the CFD provider makes the payment accordingly to the hedge fund. So these are the six attributes of a contract for difference. The first one, it's an OTC derivative. That means it's a bilateral contract between the hedge fund and the CFD provider to buy or sell an underlying asset. The CFD, uh, the hedge fund can either buy or sell. They can initiate a long position or a short position. The third point is it's trading on margin and therefore it involves extensive amount of leverage. The institutional investors are the largest participants in the CFD industry. There is no expiry date or maturity date for the CFD. The hedge fund decides when it wants to close out the opposition. And the sixth attribute is that there is only cash settlement for the CFD. There is no physical settlement for the CFD. The assets that the CFD could cover would include equities across different markets, fixed income securities across different instruments. It could be corporate bonds, it could be government bonds. The third asset class is currencies. As you know, dollar, euro, dollar, yen are extremely widely uh, traded currencies. And the fourth one is commodities. Commodities have been going through a severe cycle in this year because of the multiple geopolitical situations and therefore hedge funds are able to use CFDs to leverage on trades and make maximized profits and returns to their investors. Let's take a first scenario wherein the hedge fund initiates a long position. Let's say Hari Hedge Fund wants to buy 10,000 shares of Galaxy Inc. And the stock price of Galaxy Inc. is $10. So if Hari Hedge Fund actually buys the stock outright in the stock market, then it would have to pay $10,000 multiplied by $10. That is $100,000 of capital that Hari Hedge Fund will have to invest in buying one specific stock. This appears to be a lot of capital for Hari Hedge Fund. And they go searching for opportunities if they could use leverage to do this trade. The CFD provider comes into the picture and offers Hari Hedge Fund a long CFD position. That means Hari Hedge Fund initiates a long CFD position. This is called as an open CFD, open long CFD. Okay. The initial margin that has to be deposited by the hedge fund with the CFD provider is 10%. That means Hurry Hedge Fund has to give 10,000 multiplied by $10 multiplied by 10% as the margin which is deposited with the CFD provider. The interest cost, obviously, since this is a leveraged product, that is the hedge fund is able to initiate the position by using only 10% capital. Somebody else is paying, right, for the remaining 90% and that is the CFD provider. There is no such thing as a free lunch in this world and therefore the CFD provider charges interest to the hedge fund. This interest cost, also called as a financing cost, is linked to the currency of the financing. I've taken the example of SOFA. So far is a secured overnight financing rate, which is a dollar replacement for LIBOR plus 200 basis points. Till 2021, company uh, CFD providers used to charge interest at the rate of USD LIBOR, but since LIBOR is now replaced with SOFR, SOFR is now being charged as the benchmark reference rate. So the interest cost or the financing cost charged by the CFD provider to Hari Hedge Fund is the SOFR plus 200 basis points. For purposes of simplicity of this calculation, I've considered this to be 3% that is SOFR plus 200 basis points because we'll be working out the profit or loss for the hedge fund after these considerations. Commission is also charged by the CFD provider for initiating the trade 
and that commission let's say is 0.1 percent typically it ranges between 0.3 to point <coughs> sorry 0 0.03 percent to 0.1 percent for such trades <coughs> to recap the hedge fund has initiated a long cfd position the initial margin is deposited by the hedge fund with the cfd provider at the rate of 10 percent how much is the initial margin 10000 multiplied by 10 dollars multiplied by 10 percent the interest cost that is charged by the CFD provider to Hari Hedge Fund is so far plus 200 basis points. The commission that is charged is 0.10%. Okay. <clears throat> let's go along with this story and let's see what happens when the hedge fund decides to close out the position. In scenario 1.1, the hedge fund decides to close out the long position and at the time of closing out, the closing out price is greater than the opening price. In this case, the hedge fund has earned profits. The profit is calculated and CFD provider pays the hedge fund margin plus the profits. If on the other hand, the closing out price is less than the opening price, then it's a loss for the hedge fund they will get back the margin minus the financing costs minus the loss. So let's work out a numeric example because I always believe that finance can only be explained with numerical uh, numbers in context of the scenario that is being played out in this case. So the hedge fund has initiated a long position of 10,000 CFDs at a market price of $10. The initial margin is 10,000 which is deposited by the hedge fund with the CFD provider. So 10,000 multiplied by $10 gives us $10,000. Is this clear? Make sense? The broker collects the commission once the contract is executed. And this commission is 0.10% of 10,000. Okay, and that works out to $100. Okay. So the contract value is 10,000 multiplied by $10, that's $100,000. The broker's commission is 0 0.10 multiplied by $100,000. That gives you a commission of $100 that the hedge fund must pay to the CFD provider. So the total cost of the CFD for Hari Hedge Fund is now 10,000 plus $100, that's $10,100. Now what happens on closing out? On closing out a long position, that means Hari Hedge Fund now sells the CFD. Let's say after 20 days, Hari Hedge Fund wants to sell out at a price of $12 because the price of the underlying asset could have gone up. And therefore, they've incurred a profit. When they incur a profit, they enjoy it and therefore they quickly end cash it. The interest cost is charged by the CFD provider at a rate of 3%. That's 3% multiplied by $100,000 multiplied by 20 divided by 365. So let's again go back. 3% is so far interest plus 200 basis points. I've just taken a number like 3% so that we can easily calculate it. 3% is 3% per annum. And since it's a variable interest rate, it could change. $100,000 is the contract value on which financing was provided. That is $10,000 multiplied by $10. The financing was provided for a period of 20 days. So for 20 days divided by 365 because the US markets follow a 365 day convention. We work out the math. The interest cost comes to $164. The commission is charged again by the broker. Remember the broker treats opening position and closing out position as two separate contracts and therefore he charges a commission again at 0.10%. Over here the commission that is paid is $100, the sale proceeds is 12,000 minus 164, sorry 12,000 minus 164 minus 100 and the net profit to Hedy Hedge Fund is 11,736 minus 10,100. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens if the market price on the closing out date is lower than the opening price. 
So these, state, these uh, data points remain the same. That is the long CFD position is 10,000 contracts. The market price is $10. The initial margin is 10%. Of the contract value, the contract value is 10,000 multiplied by $10. That gives up an initial margin that the hedge fund must deposit with the CFD provider, which is $10,000. The broker's commission is 0.10% and therefore the broker charges the hedge fund at the time of entering into the contract. The total cost of the CFD for Hedy hedge fund is 10,000 plus 100 which is $10,100. These data points are exactly the same. But what happens over here is on the closing out date which is 20 days later, the market price is now fallen to $9. So the contract value now is 9000 Okay. The interest cost is 3% per annum multiplied by 100,000 multiplied by 20 divided by 365. The commission that is earned, the interest cost also remains the same because it's for the same duration of time. The broker again charges you a commission of $90, which is 0.10% of 9,000. The sales proceeds, therefore, is 9,000 minus 164 minus 90, which gives us the sales proceeds as A746, that is 9,000 minus 164 minus the commission, that's 90. The net loss to Hari Hedge Fund, therefore, is now 8,746 minus 10,100. This is the money that the hedge fund will get back after the uh, adjustments that are made by the CFD to the initial margin. Okay. Let's take a look at what is the differences between outright C uh, stocks versus CFDs. CFDs are the first parameter trade. CFDs are margin contracts, so the, in the hedge fund must deploy or initial margin. Trades are outright, so there is no question of initial margin except for a very insignificant amount because the hedge fund must otherwise pay up the entire contract value. On the second parameter, are these products of leverage? CFDs are yes, stocks are no. The third parameter is exchange traded. CFDs are OTC derivatives. CFDs are OTC derivatives. Stocks are exchange traded products. So the CFD could be OTC, but the underlying will be exchange traded. Okay, so that's possible. But the CFD itself is a structured product between the hedge fund and the CFD provider. Can short trading be permitted on CFDs? Yes, the hedge fund can initiate short positions or long positions. Unfortunately, that's not the case with stocks, except that short trading is available for institutional investors. Retail participation is generally not there in the case of CFDs because it's meant only for mutual funds, hedge funds and insurance companies who participate in very large volumes in the CFD market. In stocks, retail investors are a dominant participant. Is there any expiry on CFD? No, there is no expiry. You can carry on the CFD forever if you wanted to. But obviously, market prices will not allow you to do that. You need to always book profits or take losses because margins will otherwise, the, you could have the variation margin and the mark-to-market margin which will come into the picture of CFDs and that could eat away all your profits. In the case of stocks, if the market follows a T plus 2 settlement like the NYSC does, then there is a case for expiry which takes place on a T plus 2 basis. Settlement in CFD is only cash settlement that is profit and losses are squared off. Whereas in the case of uh, stocks, cash is settled for exchange for assets. So financial assets are exchanged for cash and that's called as physical settlement. That's all folks on this overview of CFDs. If you have any queries, do drop in a mail. Thank you so much for watching this video and there is nothing to stop us from learning and growing together. Keep learning, keep growing on this auspicious day of Guru Purnima. I thank you all for being my subscribers. Bye-bye for now.